It's a dark night in Gotham, but most are. We see a young man running from the police. Freeze! The young man looks back. We see pictures of Batman pummeling cops. That night the photos go viral, and we wake up to every morning news outlet bellowing their opinion. He's a monster. He's a hero. He's a criminal. He's a savior. Commissioner Yindel is about to make a statement to the press when a PR agent hired by the mayor's office gives her a status quo. We take vigilantism serious, but with a grain of salt. Yindel's response? I didn't say that. She drops the paper and walks out into the media frenzy. Every journalist worth their fedora was there, trying to get a scoop on Batman and make a name for themselves. Elsewhere, in the jungles of Themyscira, a group of tribesmen terrified, but not for themselves, but for the ones they love. And not just now, but always. That's no way to live. There's something out there. The jungle grows quiet. A creature erupts from the tree line, and the tribesmen let their arrows fly. The massive creature crushes them, swats them down like flies. They have no chance on their own. It would surely be the end of their fear, their terror. They'd be dead if she wasn't looking on. In an instant, she strikes. Even now, all she can really think about is how helpless they are, like every other human on this earth. When they're threatened, they call for us. They beg, call us heroes and saviors, until they're safe. Then we're threats and monsters once again. This repeats a hundred times. A hundred, hundred times. But we keep saving them. You taught us that. Diana, daughter of Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons, stands on the carcass of her vanquished foe. Diana arrives at the gates of Themyscira to train with her daughter Lara, but to her dismay, she's gone. Elsewhere, in the Arctic, Lara enters Superman's now frost-filled fortress of solitude, making inquiries about her place in this world and wondering how she can be part of her father's life. Superman encased in ice. Lara weeps, knowing lesser beings drove him to this. Lara hears something. She hears it again and is intrigued. She investigates. Kandor, the home of 10 million Kryptonians, shrunk and torn from Krypton by Brainiac, long before Krypton's demise. Hearing reports from GX News, the president had his quarterly DNA test, and you'll be happy to hear, Batman sighting reported. Police corruption ignored by the mayor's office. Listening to this, Yindel thinks to herself, how did this happen? And when did our distractions become our focus? Why did you come back? A police officer opens the door. We have him. Yindel's response, you shouldn't have come back. There's a high-speed chase, and the police are hot on the Dark Knight's tail. He cuts between traffic to elude them. But to his dismay, there's even more on the other side. A hard left into the alley. It's blocked. The only way out is up. The bike ghost rides smashing into the police cruiser as the Dark Knight watches from a perch above. Smashing down atop a car. Batman begins to make quick work of them. Until a stray bullet grazes his head and puts him down. The police know this is their only chance, and seize it. Swarming him, a relentless beating ensues. Assuming Batman has had enough, they foolishly let down their guard. They were wrong. Oh, so wrong. And they'll pay for it. Freeze! Yells Commissioner Yindel. Having a gun sighted at Batman's back, but then she realizes, it's not Batman, 
It's a woman. The woman turns and takes a swing at Yindel, but is exhausted. The commissioner easily avoids it and handcuffs her, asking just one question. Where's Bruce Wayne? Then pulling off the cowl to reveal Carrie Kelly, Robin. And she replies, where's Bruce Wayne? Bruce Wayne's dead. Dr. Ray Palmer, the Atom, is seemingly in a battle for his life against a giant monster. He jumps from the terrarium, growing to full size, and we see that the monster was a pet, just a training tool. The Atom hears something, and slowly works his way to the door. He looks down and spots a Kandorian. Looking up, he sees Lara floating there with Kandor in her arms. In shock, he drops his weapon. Dr. Palmer inquires, why is it here? And Laura explains, it was used to blackmail her father. He doesn't care about that. What he wants to know is, why is it here? They're tired of being small. Hey guys, welcome to Comic Island, I'm Justin, and this is my recap and review of Dark Knight 3 The Master Race, number 1. I really have high hopes for this series. Dark Knight Returns is a definitive Batman story in my eyes, for many reasons, and if The Master Race can even get close to the mark, I'll be a happy reader. With Dark Knight Strikes Again being a near complete miss in my opinion, I was kinda worried. Kinda really worried. But with a rock solid writer like Brian Azzarello co-piloting, I'm sure he'll be able to keep it on track. I also expect to see a ton of Wonder Woman front and center, since he's written most of her new 52 run. The way they introduced the main characters was beautiful. Wonder Woman fighting the Minotaur, Superman encased in ice, with Lara crying for her father, and Batman, well, Carrie Kelly smashing down atop a police car. Andy Kubert, Klaus Janssen, and Brad Anderson did an amazing job of keeping Frank Miller's style alive in this, but with a much more clean, polished, and finished look. While I'm talking about the art, I wanted to highlight some of the roughly 70 variant covers. It would be hard to pick a favorite, but I really like Greg Capullo's. I just like seeing a geriatric Batman giving the boots to Superman. It's always a fun thing to see. Also, a couple other really nice ones are Jim Lee's, Joshua Middleton's, Gabrielle Delato's, and many more. I only have a couple problems with this book, and they're pretty small. I wouldn't even call them problems, more of quibbles. I think we've heard enough of the Miller punk slang, or at least I have. I'm over it. And since when did Themyscira have Mesoamerican pyramids? Aren't they Greek? But it does make a nice visual. Besides that, overall I love this book. It was a great beginning to the story, and the mini comic tie-in was a great touch. Each issue will have one highlighting a different character. What do you think? Great addition, or should they have just added it to the main book? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching my recap and review of Dark Knight 3 The Master Race number 1. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I can't wait to dive into number two. See you next time.